it's quite simple in my opinion let's just look at it quickly so alternating current is like pulsating current which means like going up and down okay so it keeps on switching the direction and as you can see from the let me see one more thing Okay, so yeah, all right. So so if you look at the first wave, it's a, it's called sinusoidal wave because it looks like a sine wave, and then you have rectangular wave, it could be sawtooth as well. So whenever you're looking at this, you guys should remember that alternating voltage will basically current uh, changes polarity and we just cannot take average <clears throat> because it would cause it to be zero because if you add like positive voltage and negative voltage and then divide by two it will give you zero right so what we do is that in order to calculate mean mean uh, value we use root mean square voltage okay so that's how we're gonna do it. all right so generally we call this is rms we've already done it in ideal cases as right? well so in this it would be almost the same Anyway, just a second, please. I need to fix something. It stops recording. Okay. Right. So then we are going to go towards. So we're going to go towards looking at how we can find RMS values of different type of waves. For example, if you're looking at this particular one, which is a sinusoidal wave, when you square it off, so you guys need to understand that this portion of the wave, like from here till here, it is just half wave, right? And then from here to here, it is the other half. That would mean that when you square it up, the negative values, like if this is V negative V naught, so it's going to be V naught square. So square squaring removes the sign, which means it's going to form the wave like this. So the bottom ones are going to go up now, where they're going to get positive and squared, like larger values as well. Like this right so this means again i'm just telling you this is half and this is the other half that we just you know labeled at top is it clear everyone so we're talking about this portion and this portion this is the same as this one and this one Now, just remember that 
whatever your wave is going to be, if it's a sine wave, it will also have a general formula that I'm going to write here. And they can ask you to make the general formula yourself, but you can also, they can also give you and you need to interpret it. Like for example, this will have V equals to V naught. We write sine theta, the general equation for sine um, wave. But then because theta is given by omega, uh, basically omega is two pi by t and uh, or we can also say omega is 2 pi f because theta in whole rotation is like 2 pi. So we can write it as 2 uh, pi f as well. Right? Just remember that. So it will help you remember this. Uh, and omega, sorry, sine omega t. Let me just write it down more simply. Then you'll understand. So first step is that you write the equation v equals to v naught sine theta because theta is omega t so you can write it as v equals to v naught sine of omega t and because omega is 2 pi f so we can write v equals to v naught sine 2 pi f times t so that is how generally we would um, you know create formulas for a sine wave and depending on the question they might give you a different frequency or different amplitude uh, i mean different time period so with that you can always you know, do this interesting uh, is there anybody who did not understand this please let me know Wait a second. I want to do one thing. Fair enough. So then what you're going to do is the next when you square it up i just want to tell you that squaring would mean that we now have converted into sort of a wave which has no sign at all so for that there are two formulas they're going to use the first formula is for the voltage so <clears throat> we can say that the rms voltage is going to be v naught over under root 2 and for current rms we're going to use i naught over under root 2 is it clear everyone now then what you're going to do is just remember these for rms values and you will be able to find the uh, rms anything with respect to current and voltage any questions please let me know aman mokshit gatika dipesh tanj saman ahmed said you guys can hear me right yes sir okay fine yes sir all right so then we also need to learn how we can put, um, we can use this to find the RMS of a square wave, okay? So the steps are quite simple. You just need to basically take like one wave, for example, in this one, you might see that the wave is like here. And this one. This is one whole wave. Okay. So what you're going to do is next, you can isolate it and you can see there are three seconds of it. And when you take a square of this, so obviously 
for the first second, if you look at this, it remained 2.5. So 2. Point square, 2. 5 square is 6.25. So I don't know why I put this. Please cut this off. It should be 6.25. So for the first second, it will remain like this. And then for the next second, if you look at it, for the next two seconds, which is from here, from here till here, it is negative. It should be negative one, not this one. Anyway, so negative one, which is like, if you take one square, it will be one. So it will remain like this. Okay. So this is a square wave like this. Anyway, so then what you're going to do is, step one, what we did was the isolate like one time period. Okay, in this case, it is three seconds, but it would be different for other ones. Step two, square all values over this time period. Then what you do, do is in step three, take the mean of all square values. Like for example, 6.25 remained for one second. So I'm going to write it 6.25 times one plus uh, one remained for next two seconds. So I'm going to do one into one. Okay, one into two. Why am I doing one into two? Because it's just that one for the next one second was like one and for the next one second was also one. So I'm going to just say, I can write one into two or one plus one. It's up to you. Divided by three. So the total time was three. So 2.75 volts will be uh, the square value. Then up till now, in step four, what you want to do is just root the value. So VRMS will be equal to under root 2.75, and that's going to be 1.66 volts. Any questions, please let me know. All right, now. So what we've done is we have basically done, right? We have squared them. We have then taken mean and then we have rooted them. So if you go from square, then mean to this, you will form V R M S just like this. So you always go backwards like this and you'll be able to find it anyway. So now I just want to tell you, like we have some common formulas that give us like power and energy and stuff like that, right? These formulas can also be used to find uh, average of this. Like for example, if I want to find power average, I would use VRMS times IRMS. Similarly, in this question, I would use VRMS square divided by R. In this one, to find average power, you can use I RMS whole square times R. For energy, average energy in this, we can use V RMS times I RMS times time. And in this one, we can use uh, V RMS equals to I RMS times R. It would give us the same resistance. And we also, okay, I wrote it twice. I don't know why. But you can write it this way. Okay, like that. Now, the next question says prove that average power is equal to peak power times 2. Which is quite simple to basically do. All you need to do is, all you need to do is that you guys need to remember that the average power is given by I RMS times v rms as we have written here so 
in in uh, alternating way we know that i rms is equal to i naught over under root 2 and v rms is equal to v naught over under root 2 so we can replace this and we can say i naught over under root 2 times v naught over under root 2 so then power average will be i naught times v naught over under root 4 so this is going to be i naught v naught like Weak power is equal to V naught I naught. So we can write power average equals to power peak and under root two is just two. So hence root. Is that clear everyone? Any questions? Let me know please. Right. Okay. Uh, you guys can hear me because my internet is not well since few days, so I don't know. You got to say hello, yes. Whatever. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Okay, then we're gonna move to the next part. Hello. Which one why? No, no, no. We're going to move forward. We're going to look at this one. It says that this is sort of a wave, which is sinusoidal, and the resistance is 450. And it says the figure, use data from figure 11.1 to determine the time t uh, equals to t 30 milliseconds. Yeah. The frequency of the current. Now, you guys need to understand that. You just need to find the one way, like it starts from here. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? And yes, I can hear you. All right, good. I joined from my phone today, so that's why. It's all right, you. And you're also late. Yes, I joined from my phone for this reason. Okay. So this point is like... 2.5 and this point is like 17.5 right so that means that the time period of this wave is 15 milliseconds so 15 milliseconds would be the frequency will be one upon time period so i can write 15 into 10 is to minus 3 and then i'm just going to use my calculator to do that so 1 divided by 15 times 10 is to power minus 3 so that's going to be 67 hertz. Is that clear, everyone? Right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mean current. And for mean current. So for frequency, guys, we took the peak value, right? You can take any value. You can take this value, this value as well. It's fine. It has to be one complete wave, okay? Oh, okay. Right. So then um, we're going to do the mean current. Mean current means it's talking about RMS value. So we should remember that I RMS has to be equal to the maximum current over under root 2. The maximum current that I see is right here, which is 0 0.75 amperes. I'm going to put it right into this. 0 0.75 over under root 2. And then it's going to be 0 0.53 amperes. Is it clear? Like that. It's very simple. This topic is very simple as long as you remember these two formulas. Oh, wow. That's that's not good. Sorry. It's talk about, it, it was talking about the mean current. My bad. Sorry. 
mean current would be 0.75 and here it is minus 0.75 so it is one mark because it is going to be zero as uh, when you add 0.75 minus 0.75 divided by 2 it's going to give you zero rms value we found i rms would be 0.75 under root 2 and that's going to be 0.53 amperes now it's fine is it clear everyone any questions here Gatika, what happened to you? Are you sad, sick today? Not speaking at all. Yes, sir. I am sick. Mm. Okay, get well soon then. All right. Thank you. Sir, after then, realizing you lost marks, obviously you'll become sick. Maybe. I don't know. The energy dissipated by the resistor. So we got to do that. All right. Now, energy dissipated by the resistor is very simple. Uh, you can use energy equals to voltage times current times time the issue is that we don't have voltage we're going to use um, like we know that this is what it is and uh, we have the time for 30 seconds i think it's talking about yeah per second i don't know uh, we have current we have resistance and we need to find energy so well we could use power then power equals to i squared times r and energy would be I squared times R times T. Is it clear, everyone? Now, what next you're going to do is, why, why, why would you do this to me? Today, my internet is so bad, and my one lecture is lost as well. I'm so sad today. I'm not really happy. Oh, goodness. Wait a second, please. I need to fix this first before I lose your lecture as well. All right. Anyway, so we're going to go to this now for because it says that there is like wave state till 30 right here. OK, we're going to use 30 milliseconds for time. The current, we can use the peak current, right? Because the thing is, you can use RMS as well. But I don't think they have asked for, yeah, they have asked for RMS. That's not good. So RMS current was like. Uh, 0 0.53, you're going to square it. The resistance was 450, I believe. Yeah. And 30 milliseconds would be 30 times 10 raised to minus 3. So I think that's going to be... Now, because Gatika is sick, I'm very sad as well because nobody's calculating anything now. That's not good. Yeah, how do Who's you know you have to use RMS? Sorry? How do you know that you have to use the RMS current, not the max? The peak current, that's what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. OK. The reason I know that I need to use this, because in a wave like this, you know, peak current you will only use if the wave was straight like this. Do you understand, Ahmed? Yes. Because the like the current is keep on changing across each you know time, that means we have to use RMS. Then we can't use the peak current always. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, so then we're gonna go towards one of the most important things, and that is rectification. Now, for rectification, we should understand that. Why did I not put in the question here? Okay, never mind. Rectification basically means that it is the way to convert um, alternating current to direct current. Okay, so we're gonna 
right? That it is a process that ensures current flows in one direction only using diode or combination of diodes. All right, is it clear? Now, so you guys need to understand this, that when you have this side, which is like one half cycle, and this is the other half, so I'm going to put half. So what happens is that if you have a CRO connected in alternating current, sometimes the current goes like this, and the other times it would just move in the opposite direction. So you see a wave like this. But if you put a diode right here, what happens is diode only allows current in forward bias direction, but it doesn't allow current in the reverse direction. So you can't get the current, which means now your wave will be something like this. So it is going to cancel out the other half completely. Do you guys understand this? Now, this sort of rectification that you see right now is basically called half, half wave rectification. And half wave rectification means that 50% of energy is lost. All right, because uh, you can never get that back. It's wasted in that sense. Is it clear, everyone? Just remember that should be like you guys should be able to you know recall from AS that in reverse bias, like reverse bias is this direction. Okay, in reverse bias, diodes have a very high impedance impedance means that it's it's basically high resistance and in forward bias they have almost zero impedance so they do not offer on no resistance stuff so that's why the current can from here to there easily Okay, now this doesn't really solve our problem because we want to convert AC to DC, but 50% of energy is being lost. So that's not good. So what you're gonna do is, first you're gonna do the question, then we'll move forward. Anyway, now whenever you see this sort of you know equation in a question, you should automatically understand that this equation represents the general equation that I've told you which means it is going to be V equals to V naught sine of two pi F and T. It's omega basically, right? So you can also write it as omega T if you want to, it's fine. So it says determine the RMS value of the power supply. So we need to, uh, of the potential difference, right? So V naught, V naught with comparison to this equation is three two. So V RMS is going to be 320 divided by under root 2, that's the only formula. So I'm going to do 320 divided by under root 2, and that's going to be 226. So I'm going to write 226 volts. Everybody understand this? Any questions, please? Okay, that's very relieved. I'm relieved that you guys have no questions here. Anyway, so then we are going to go towards the next part. It says determine the time period. Now, you guys need to understand that omega is given by 100 pi because you can compare it, right? Omega is also given by 2 pi by t. So pi and pi will cancel out. So t will be 2 over 100, which makes it 0 0.020 seconds. All right? Easy, right? Any questions now? Okay. 
So then, so then we are going to look at the next one. So it says power supply is connected to resistant diode, as we have seen already from the example that I gave you. See the type of rectification produced. So we're going to say it is half wave rectification because this is the typical circuit of half wave rectification that we have already seen. Okay, then moving on, this case sketch the variation of time t potential difference across r from t to 40 milliseconds and sketch the graph. I don't know where that 40 millisecond is. 40 milliseconds. So we got the time period which is like 2. Milli, uh, 40 milliseconds is sort of, uh, if we have time period in this, so this would be 1, 2, 3. So 20 milliseconds would be the time period. Am I right? No, right? So 40 milliseconds would mean that we are looking at two cycles okay, of this, which means 20 milliseconds is half. So originally, one half would be created like this. And so this voltage was the peak voltage. So peak voltage was basically 320. So we got to basically put it at 320. 320 was, I think, should be somewhere here. And I'm going to make a wave like this. And then for the next half, I'm going to put it 0 because it cancels out. And then I'm going to put 320 again here. And the next half is just going to get cancelled. So I have to just make a half wave rectified wave just like this. Okay. Any questions, please let me know. So why did you stop at 10? Would you repeat that part? Because 20 millisecond was the full wave, which means that originally the wave would have been like this. Do you understand? Okay. There will be two, two waves in this, right? Because it's half wave rectified, so the negative values will be cancelled out. Is it clear? Okay. Then it says, figure, draw the symbol of component that may be connected to produce whole thing. Right now, we uh, I'm just going to give you this as homework. And uh, when we do this, you can complete it later as well. Okay. It will be, we'll be, we'll be doing it in just a uh, few minutes. Anyway, so the idea behind, you know, this is that we do not want to waste 50% of energy. We need to make sure that we get 100% of this back. And that can be done by uh, full wave rectification. So, for example, this is the half wave that we're talking about. And this is also the half wave that we're talking about. So we want this back. We don't want to waste it, which means the goal of this is that we must be able to create a wave that should somehow look like this, OK? That means the half wave and the other half should also be recovered, OK? We do not want them to, we do not want it to be canceled out or wasted because that's not good. Anyway, so doing this, this sort of wave can only be be achieved by using a bridge rectifier circuit. Bridge rectifier circuit is very simple. I'm going to show you that, and we're going to learn about it in a bit. But that's how it's done. But before we go there, there's certain rules that we need to follow. Okay, The rules that we're going to follow for the bridge rectifier is I should have wrote, written it here instead of there. So I'll write it here. Number one, number one rule is that you should always remember that current only flows, current only flows from higher potential to a lower potential. Javeria, if you do not have your have you copied it? Like, have you printed it out?
The other thing is that across each electrical component, like when you know uh, charge would pass, there is a potential drop if current flows through it. Okay. So obviously, when the, it will go through a component, the component will use some energy. Okay. The third thing you guys need to understand is that a diode is forward biased if potential behind it is greater than potential in front of it. Okay, so you guys need to remember that. Like the diode must have a greater potential. Potential should be greater than this, then it will let it flow. And the last rule before we do this circuit is that a diode is reverse biased if potential behind the diode is less than the potential in front of diode all right like if you have the diode and then obviously the potential here is greater than it would not allow the current to flow so you just need to remember that any questions please let me know please write down then we'll go forward Okay, so now we're gonna go to this circuit. Now, first of all, suppose this was an alternating source. And now I'm gonna follow a path and you guys should follow along with me to learn how I'm dealing with this. So in the first instance, L was positive, M was negative, which means that the current is going to go from L. Let me change the color. It's not like contrasting. I need, uh, let's take orange. Okay. So you're going to go here in this direction. Okay. Like that. And then we're going to go here. We're going to reach two. When I reach two, I need to decide where should I go. So where do you think the current is going to go? Towards A or towards T? Mm -hmm. A. The reason we want to go towards A is because it is forward biased. So we're going to go here and here, and we're going to reach three. Okay, like that. Then at three, I'm going to decide where to go. I can't go towards B because it is opposite, like it's reverse bias. So I have to go here. Okay, like that. And then from this point, let's call this X. So I'm going to go from x to this current will go from x to let's say this y so current through r is going from x to y then i'm gonna go towards this like that and then the current will go towards here which is like one when i reach one i should realize that i cannot go towards you, although I can go towards D or C, but the current will not go towards D. The reason is that at two right now, the potential was higher than one. So potential is lower. So we can't go from low to high. Do you guys understand? Because across R, some potential was dropped. Is it clear? So 
the current needs to go through this then because the potential was higher uh, beyond D. And then from here, we're going to go back to M. Do you guys understand the path? Yes, sir. Good. In the next instance, when, like right now, I'm going to make some values. As well. So CR01 was this one. So we have like one wave like this. Half wave is done, half cycle. CR03, we have also half cycle done. And CR02, we have also half cycle done like this. Okay, so on CROs, we'll see this. In the next instance, when this becomes positive and this side becomes negative because it is a alternating current. So now current from here will go in the opposite direction. When it reaches four, where do you think we should be going? Okay, so we're gonna, exactly. So we're gonna go towards this side and we're gonna reach three. Now I can't go back from A because it's opposite. So I'm gonna go towards X and then here and then here. So X to Z. Notice that now, although the current direction from the start was opposite, but both the currents, blue and orange are still going from X to Y because they were positioned like this uh, due to the diodes. Do you guys understand this? So then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to this side. Okay. When I reach one, I can't go towards four. Do you know the reason why I can't go towards four? Higher potential at four. Four, is, it is higher potential. So here the potential is greater than here. The potential is lower. So I will be pushed towards D. And from D, I will have to go here. Now from uh, like one to two, when I reach two, I should also realize that the issue with two is that I can't go back towards A because obviously here three is higher potential than two. So I have to go back now. And then I will reach the same point. Do you guys understand this? So keeping that in mind, CR01 will show me the other half, blue half is like this. CR03, the current never passed, so there will be nothing shown. And CR02 will show a recti fully rectified wave like this. Is it clear, everyone? Any questions now? OK. Perfect, huh? So this way, you can always, you know, take your path and just remember two things. You cannot go in the reverse direction with the diode and you will always go from higher to lower potential. You can't go from lower to higher potential and you will always find your way to go with whatever type of, you know, uh, diodes. The other thing you guys need to notice is that the opposite diodes, like, let me write it here. You see the opposite diodes are always parallel. So these are parallel and even these are parallel. Do you guys understand this? You see A and C are like this, B and C and like that. So if they ask you to draw this, so you should always understand that opposite ones should be parallel. Any questions? So what is the difference between CRO1 graph and CRO2 graph? CRO1 graph shows like positive and negative half. CRO3 shows, CRO2 only shows positive because we have rectified it. Do you get it? Okay. It was V positive. It was V negative. It was only V positive like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, moving on. You guys have drawn this. Should I go forward? If you haven't printed the sheet, you must print revoice the video and do it on your own. Otherwise, you will be pretty confused in the exam as well about this because this is just, it seems like complicated. It's not, but if you don't practice, obviously, you'll even forget about it. So now, this question that I'm going to show you 
in this question it is an easy question compared to the other ones and says you just need to you know probably complete it or whatever and the rule that you guys should remember is that opposites are parallel you guys remember this already or no okay now if you look at this question it says that It says that complete the diagram. Now, if I were you, I would remember that, okay, my teacher told me that this diode and that diode must be parallel. So I'm gonna make this opposite ones parallel. I'm gonna make this as parallel. Do you guys understand this? And automatically I will get the marks. You get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Then it says figure positive and negative terminal of the rectifiers. We need to, you know, do that. So we need to make uh, positive. This, this is the DC output. This is the rectifier that we're looking at, right? So now we're going to make how it goes. So for the first one, I will start from here. I'm going to go here. And I can't go to the other side. So I'm going to go here and here and then here. The moment I reach this, I will be pushed down. It means that this will be positive, this will be negative. I don't need to even draw this, draw the whole thing because I know that it's going to be like this, right? Okay. Then it says that uh, the output voltage of AC is given. Term, now determine the equation. Now this is when he has asked for the equation. The moment I see the sine wave, I'm going to write it as V equals to V naught sine of theta right or you can just write omega t if you want to that's even easier now i want to write uh, the equation in terms of t in seconds uh, and um, i want to write v in terms of t and v words fine so if you look at this this is sort of right now this is like a zero and this is where it is right one wave one whole wave is like this so I think it's going to be two is like this. So it means three is going to be somewhere in the middle. That means it's 2.2, 2.4, 2.6. So it's 2.5. All right. So my time period, the time period for this is 2.5 seconds. And omega is two pi by time period. So if I use my calculator to do this, two divided by 2.5 is 0 0.8. I can just write it as four by five. Okay, or just write 0 0.8, 0 0.8 pi. Just leave it this way, okay? Then write V equals to V naught sine. Omega is 0 0.8 pi and time is T. So that would be the answer for this equation. Uh, oh, sorry. And I also forgot we can use V naught. V naught would be this value, which is, I think, 2 point again one two three four five so this is three so three point two three point four three point three point five three point five so we have to write that as well so it's going to be three point five sine zero point eight pi t so we can just write three point five sine zero point eight pi t you can also use you can also multiply pi if you want to but that's fine that would be okay is it clear everyone Yes, sir. We're going to test you both ways, and please do not fail in this. This is very easy. Now, then it says the supply is connected to one 12 ohm resistor. Calculate the mean power. So, we know mean power requires RMS value. We have the voltage, I think. The voltage peak voltage was 3.5. So, RMS value is V0 over under root 2, like that. So we're going to find this uh, 3.5 divided by under root 2. We're going to use uh, 2.47. 2.47. Okay, Karthika is feeling well now. That's good. So 2.47, and then you can simply use because power, uh, average power is given by voltage RMS whole square over R. So 2.47 whole square and what was the resistance 12 yes Gatika, what is that then 0.51 0.51 okay 
So that would be the answer. So this chapter is very easy. Do not worry about that at all. Now going forward. Now in this one, it has given like this one, I'm going to give you as homework because this is like the equation one and you can simply do this on your own. Do not worry about that. That's pretty simple. And now I'm going to go towards the advantages and disadvantages of the AC. Okay. So uh, the advantages of alternating current is that power can be generated at higher voltages. So at higher voltages, the current is low, which means that it causes it to be, you know, uh, less heating because if current is kept low, heating in the bias is less or transmission is like less losses. The maintenance of AC substation is easy and cheap. It's going to write that. And then AC voltage can be stepped up or down using a transformer. Now, transformer previously was in our course, but it has been kicked out. But uh, you still need to be aware of whatever you've done in IT uh, and all of us, because that is that part is included. So it permits, you know, high voltage power transmission and distribution with low power loss because of less current okay just remember that power is voltage times current so voltage is power over current for same power if you make it like high voltage current will be less in the transmission just need to remember that but there are obviously some disadvantages as well that we need to know so first a disadvantage is that ac line requires more copper than DC. So it's obviously uh, quite, you know, expensive in that sense. So the construction of AC is more complicated because you need to put step up transformers and blah, blah, blah. So that's basically something. Then near uh, houses, when AC is stepped down, voltage is reduced, so losses can occur. Though they're not significant, but they can still occur because current will be higher then. Just need to remember that. All right, any questions, please? Finally, so how does it permit high voltage power transmission? Gatika, you know about step up and step down, no? Transformers? Yeah. So the secondary part of that is like we have more turns, so voltage increases. So the power is the same. Like the power that comes into the transformer is the same as that goes out, right? But by in increasing the voltage, by increasing the number of turns, so what we do is we reduce the current, all right? And if the current is reduced, then heating in the wires is less. So less power loss. Do you understand? OK, yeah. OK, going to the next. Now, again. Sir, give me a second. I need to write that down. OK, sorry. Now, basically, the real difference between AC and DC is that AC, even when we rectify it, it becomes like this, right? But real DC is like a straight line. So we're not happy about that. We do not want it to just fluctuate like this. We want it to be smooth, right? So the next thing we're going to do is smoothing. 
think you guys write it down. Okay, while you're writing, I just need to get me some water. And then I'll be back. Hello, Gatika. Hello, excuse me. Uh, like I have seen you, you have been studying here from since a long time. So I think you have completed the quantum physics chapter, right? Yep, I have. So like uh, I got to find in YouTube that uh, there are videos, but uh, do you have the updated notes of these chapters, medical physics and astrophysics? Yeah, I do have. So could you share it with me? Okay, I'll share it after the class. Okay, so you guys are like now talking, it means you're done, right? Please share it to me as well, All right. Okay, guys, so we're going to go forward and we're going to learn about smoothing. So smoothing basically means that we have rectified wave like this. And somehow, because we're not satisfied with the gaps in this, so we want it to basically somehow get a little bit more smoothed out like this, right? So this is called smoothing. Okay, so you make a line like this and this. Now, you guys need to understand that the green line that I've drawn is done, this is called smoothing of rectified AC. And this is done using a capacitor. And because it is done using a capacitor, so uh, the lines do not are not perfectly straight. As you can see, the lines are like going down. They're like going down slowly, which means that this shows the decay nature of discharge of capacitor, right? So capacitor discharge is like, you know, it goes down like that, and that's why. But in the final result, what we get is, we get something like this that you see, which is much better than the gaps that we had, because now we are some sort of recovering this much of energy every single time. Do you guys understand this? Okay, now let's go forward. So to achieve this, what you need to do is, we, what you need to understand is that from this graph, you should understand that between this part where maximum peak is achieved, like from here to here, this section basically shows us the charging of capacitor. And this section where it shows us like line is going down this this is basically the discharging of capacitor because the capacitor in the event when the current is decreasing in this section which i've drawn blue the capacitor provides that current as a filler so it fills up that you know energy gap that we need so what we're doing we're doing we're charging the capacitor and when the current is going down Capacitor is providing that so that the, the AC output or the DC output that we have rectified is as smooth as ever. Is it clear, everyone? Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Okay, you guys can draw this and then I'm going to go to the next one because I posted next slide. So can you explain this once again, please? Yes. You see, Gatika. In this section, the section you see right now, this one, right? This one. You might realize that 
the current is increasing in this. It's increasing like this, right? Do you understand this? Yes, sir. When the current is increasing, so we are in this section, we are charging the capacitor that we put in the circuit, okay? okay? But when the current is going down, like it's like potential is dropping now. So we want the capacitor to provide us current so that it can fill up this. Do you understand? Energy gap. Provided, sir. So I'm going to show you in the diagram as well. Don't worry, okay? You guys can just draw this first. Juvedi, are you done? <coughs> Tanjim, you understand everything, Suman? Aman, Fahar? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's go forward. Now, so basically, in the bridge rectifier with the resistor R, we connect the capacitor right parallel to this, like this, as you can see. Okay. So what happens? What happens is that the current basically comes from here, it goes down, and as we know, it's going down. Slowly, the potential is dropping. When the potential drops, the same current basically first charges the capacitor, and when the capacitor is fully charged, as the potential drops, the capacitor then provides current back so that it can go through R again and fill up that gap that we had, right? So we can say that we can basically say that in the first section, as you can see, right? When potential at X starts to drop, So the capacitor discharges to provide current. Okay. Like that. You should remember this only. It's all right. Now the discharge of the capacitor follows the same rules that we have done in previously in the capacitance, which is V equals to V naught. E minus T over RC. So this is how it uses, right? Now, I just want to tell you something very important. The time to discharge depends on time constant. Time constant T, I told you in the previous chapter, capacitance was that it is equal to RC. So either you can increase the load or use a bigger capacitor, okay? Increase load resistance R or use a larger capacitor to provide more smooth line, okay? Which means that basically, if your line looked like this and we use a bigger capacitor, then your line would basically look like this. It will be less jerky. So this is like with larger capacitor. And this is with smaller capacitor. Because a smaller capacitor would discharge faster, so it would not be able to fill up that gap easily. Is it clear, everyone? Will you guys remember this? So you can also, if you do not have like many, uh, like a larger capacitor, you can use capacitors in parallel as well, because in parallel, we have learned that overall the capacitance increases, okay? All right, you can write this down and then I'm going to go to the next. Now from, I don't think from now on, we will be finishing one chapter each class because now the chapters are very small. Except for the
phase one. That's very long. Okay, going forward. Uh, Juvedia, you're done? Juvedia. Okay, now going to the next. So for example, they've shown you this circuit and they've shown you the wave pattern as well. It says, use the data to determine the energy transfer from capacitor to between T1 and T2, okay. So we want to find the energy transferred from the capacitor, but that's, that, that's pretty cool. It's easier as well. If you notice that this section, which starts from here, from here till here, the capacitor is discharging. And from here till here, it is charging again. Do you guys agree? Now, you guys can hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I thought I lost two people for a moment. Anyway, so now we're going to say how much, uh, I mean, it was right here, like right here. I'm going to look at what is the voltage value right here. So it's right in the middle, that makes it seven. And I think it is seven. I don't know if it's seven, but I think it's seven. So never mind. So we got seven and when it was discharged, this start charging and it was four, right? Is it clear, everyone? Okay. So this means that then the change in energy is given by half C V one squared minus half C V2 squared. Now, most of the people would do the mistake by taking change in energy already. I have told you in the previous chapter as well, please don't do that. So half the capacitor value was 47 microfarad. So I'm going to write 47 micro is 10 raised to minus six. And V1 was seven squared, V2 was four squared. Okay. Okay, Gatika, can you please find this? 7.8 times 10 raised to minus four. So that would be the change in energy that you can find. It is very simple like that. So you only considered the discharging part? Yes, because that's when the capacitor is supplying the energy. Okay. It's supplying capacitor to the resistor. It's not when we're giving energy to capacitor to charge up again. You get it? Yes, sir. Then the next is uh, this one. Uh, you guys can do the first part. I'm very, very positive about that. And it says, I'm going to do this one. Next, you will do. It says the potential difference because low del is smooth using capacitor. Use figure 1.1 to draw the symbol of capacitor connected to produce smoothing. So capacitor is always connected parallel to resistance. So remember that, OK? Then it says the minimum potential difference across low del smoothing capacitor is 3. Sketch the variation of this. So minimum potential would be 3, which means somewhere between, I think, this. So just make a dotted line. Because it will help you, you know, get it, and then just smooth it out. Oh, by the way, there's an there's even a bigger issue. Actually, the wave is not rectified, so we also need to rectify it first. So if we rectify it, it would look somewhat like this, okay, like this, and also just do the same for this, and then make smoothing part till three. So it's gonna go three, and then it's gonna go up, and then it's gonna go three, and it's gonna go up, and then till three, then go up, then till three, and then go up. So you have to make sure that you make this line. Okay, the red one is the smooth line. You have to make, make it like a rectified wave, otherwise you will get it wrong. Okay. Anyway, is it clear everyone? Any questions here?
Then for three marks, it was very easy, if you understand now. Then again, uh, this one, you guys need to do it on yourself. You know what rectification means and everything else is the same. Again, the same, you need to make the line and draw the capacitor. So that's up to you. And that would be it. All right. So this is the sort of questions that they're going to give you. They're pretty easy, either smoothing or either, you know, the question related to the equation and nothing else in this chapter. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know.